Thank you for joining me once again in another exciting tutorial video of science. This is your tutor, the science guru, Mr. Mubiana. In today's lesson, guys, we are looking at a science practical tutorial. Come with me as we learn the first tutorial. So today we are looking at uh, the experiment, simple pendulum. So how do you conduct this experiment? So in order for you to conduct this experiment, you need the following things to be in place. You need uh, a stand, a string, a mass, and, uh, and a stand, a string, mass, and a stopwatch. So now, what are they going to ask of you? They are going to be asked to say, you need to set up your, you need to set up your, your experiment in this form. So this is a stand, guys. This is a stand. Okay. So this is a stand. And you are setting up your experiments in this form. So this is the ball. This is the ball. And this is a string. Okay. Then you will be told to you will be told to say. So if I've, I've given you this diagram, uh, this is just my example. They can ask you anything. This is my example. It's what I'm going to ask you. So, me, I can say that uh, length of string. Okay. Then I say oscillation. Oscillation. Then I say time. Get it? I say oscillation. Then I say time. Oh, I say now the length of a string, let's say this is 5, 10, 15, and 20. Oscillation, I say 10, 20, 30, 40. I record the time. Okay? Now, what does it mean, the length of a string to be 5 centimeters? Are you with me? The length of a string to be 5 centimeters. So, you use your meter ruler. So, I forgot to um, say meter. Meter so you use your meter rule, you measure the distance from the point where your string is being hung. There, where you tie it, you measure up to the point where you're up to the point where you are meeting the ball. So this length should be a distance of what five centimeters. Okay. Now sometimes examiners are going to ask you to say. The five centimeter should even be should include the mass of it should include the ball. So when measuring, get your ruler. You measure from the ball up to where the point of uh, of of hanging is. So you do that. Upon doing that, remember that when conducting this experiment, you are given a stopwatch. So you get your stopwatch. This is your stopwatch. This is your stopwatch. You are making 10 oscillations. Okay, you are making 10 oscillations. So you suspend your ball to a point or to an angle that you think will give you the 10 oscillation. So you make it go high a bit, like this. Have you seen it? It's high. Then you let it go. So once you let it go, you're going to notice that. It's going to be moving, it's going to move, it comes here, it moves, it comes there, okay? It moves, it comes there. Then, it moves again, goes back, it moves again, comes to this point. So, how do you know that it has made the one? When it moves from the point of suspension, and when it comes back to the point of suspension, you count one. Now. Once you release this bob of yours, let go of the stopwatch, okay? And once you count, it goes, comes back, one, it goes, comes back, two, it goes, comes back, three, it goes, comes back, four, it goes, comes back, and five. You stop the stopwatch, you let the bob uh, continue swinging, it's fine. Your interest is in the stop, your interest is... Your interest isn't the ball. Your interest is the stopwatch. So let's say the time you have recorded for it to move, for it to make 10 oscillations is, uh, 
is uh, we are getting, let's say, uh, we are getting 0, 7 seconds. Okay? Remember, you are getting seconds. Then you come again to 20 oscillations. Adjust your what? Adjust your string. Make sure that you measure it. It becomes 10, 10 centimeters. Adjust it to 10 centimeters. Then you let it go. So let's say the, 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 the time it took is 17 seconds. Okay? Yeah. Then we come. Adjust it to 15 and make 30 oscillations. Let's say it took 27 seconds. Adjust it to 20 and make 40 oscillations. And let's say it took uh, 34 seconds. Now, you are going to be taught the following things. You are going to be taught to say, plot a graph of oscillation against time. Okay, plot a graph of oscillation against time. Then, you come, you tell, the second question will be, find, find the, the gradient. Find the gradient. Then the last question they're going to tell you to state. Even uh, to state the precautions. State the, the precautions. They can also ask you to say that. They can also ask you to say that uh, factors that affect the movement of the ball. They're going to ask you for the factors, factors that uh, affect affect movement movement of the ball okay movement of the ball so you are trying to you are trying to you are trying to you're trying to plot oscillation against time so you, you make sure that you get your graph paper nicely Come first, make the demarcations of the graph. You know how to use a graph paper. You make those demarcations of the graph. Once you make the demarcations of the graph, you, you come up now with a range. Come up with a range. Okay, let's say this is my graph paper. I've left a space this side, and I've also left, left a space this side. And I'm saying oscillation against time. And let's say this is oscillation, and this is time time. Okay? Then, um, I'm supposed to use 3% of the graph paper or 3 thirds of the graph paper. So let me come up with a range. Let me be counting in 5. I say 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Okay? Even with time, I do the same. Even with time, I do the same. Let me be counting. Let me start counting in uh, 10, 20, no, 20, okay, to work, 30, 40. I start counting like this, okay? Then I plot, I plot, I say, what is uh, 10, 7, I assume it's somewhere here, I come. I say, what is uh, 20, 20, 17, I assume it's somewhere there, okay? I plot. Then, what is uh, 30, 20, uh, 30, 30 oscillation 27? I assume it's somewhere there. Then I plot. I plot. Then I say, what is uh, 40, 40, comma what? 40, comma 34? I assume it's somewhere there. So if you're using a graph paper, it's going to come out a lot. So then I just drain the points. Just doing my point, just doing my point, okay? So you can tell here that I'm coming up with a straight line. So when you conduct this experiment, you plot this, you need to come up with a straight line. Then you're taught to say, find the gradient. When you're taught to find the gradient, you use this formula to say, gradient symbolized by, given by M, is equals to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Now, you just choose coordinates that you want. If you want, you can decide to say, let me choose this and this, and I chose this and this. No problem, it's up to you. So I've chosen 10, you have chosen what? 
20, 17. Then your book you have also chosen 30, 27. So you label it. This is your x1, y1, x2, y2. Then you substitute here and get the final answer. So you say, what is your y2, 27? y1 is 17. x2, x2 is what? x2 is uh, 30. x1, it is what? It's 20. You substitute. This uh, this there will give you will give you 10. This there will give you 10. So your gradient is what? 1. You have found your gradient. Then they are going to ask you to state the precautions. The precautions that you state here that you put is uh, you need to take note of the zero error. Why the zero error? Sometimes we understand that uh, when suspending the, the, the bulb of a pendulum and the stopwatch, you may like you are likely to miss. You are likely to miss. So just put the zero error. Then what are some of the factors that affect the movement of the bulb? One, we've got the length of the string. Two, we've got the, the distance from the point of suspension. Three, we've got also the mass of the bulb. So those are some of the things that can affect the movement of the bulb under this experiment. Thank you for watching this video.